Hey, this is Superdell back again. Uh, <laughs> Aviator PPG did not like my showing you the blatantly obvious truth. So they tried that trick of flagging the video claiming copyright, but it is protected under the Fair Use Act. That's why you can take a small clip of somebody's video and show a side-by-side -side comparison for educational purposes. That's the whole point of that. Um, okay, but until the time being, it's gonna take a little bit for that video to be a backup. So let's just show you again uh, how an actual run and jump should look and the details and pieces. All those, there's zillions of little details that all have to be learned one piece at a time. But to show you the overall results uh, should give you a really good thing to be able to compare to others. And this is how you should do paramotor research. You don't just take their word versus their word. Just throw opinions completely out of it and you take a video like this one and you forward it and email it to as many instructors as you like and demand they show you their skill at doing this and then show their students doing this. Pretty much nobody out there is gonna wanna compete honestly, truth for truth, skill against skill against me, um, but it's, that's the way you do it. Just the fact that they won't even try to compete kind of tells you everything you want to know. So let's show you what a proper run and jump should look like and explain just a few of the pieces. So here we go. First of all, you've got to keep the glider loaded the whole time. So you're going to see his hands go up, his body's going to drop as he loses lift in the glider by putting his hands up. And your body has to drop with that lift because if you stay standing on your feet and you drop lift, boom, that's how you take collapses. So you've got to pay attention to things like that. Also, you can't jump while standing on straight legs. And so as you drop your stance, you also crouch and that allows you to run and jump. So the big keys here is to get all the pieces and to be able to do it without taking a collapse or losing control or shooting off way off to one side uh, and doing it wrong. You also need to be able to assess whether you're going the right direction. And if the glider's not above you, do not commit to the launch. So here we go. Hands up, drops, runs, jumps, breaks, lands beautifully. No big, huge violence. Glider doesn't shoot them off to the side. Doesn't take a big collapse like the guys at Aviator PPG. And of course, that's their instructors, remember. Uh, this is my student, my brand new student. He's still in training. This isn't even the end of the class. Uh, that, you know, go out and compare this with other instructors. So that's the way it's supposed to look. So let's watch again. Same sort of thing. Does he fly in a straight line or does he shoot off to one side? The reason they would shoot off to one side is because they ran the wrong way or simply didn't keep the glider above them. If you commit to launch and your glider's not above you, you're gonna immediately shoot off to the side that the glider is falling to. So it is incredibly important to get massive amounts of hours with a real instructor that will iron in all these pieces. One of the hardest of which is just to run the right direction because the glider, it's very tricky to get your brain around uh, running exactly the direction the glider takes you instead of the direction you want to go. But let's watch this run and jump here. Falls forward, crouches, runs, jumps, flares, lands beautifully, no collapse, maintains control. So same thing here. Let's do it again. And hands up, falls. Oh, fixes it right there. That's a very good one to note. Because right there, he knew he went the wrong direction and the glider wasn't over him. So you can see him pause and then fix the problem. This is huge. This is super training. This is what we work into reflexes to make sure this is automatic uh, built into your brain. Because you don't have time to think of these things. It's got to be automatic. So... He hesitates right there, changes directions to the correct one, then completes the run and jump. Super, super critical, and that is a demonstration of a lot of work. Let's just watch that one again, because it's really cool. So he runs, he stops right there, he turns direction, then completes the run and jump. 
You never want to commit to that launch unless your glider is above you. And again, that's a problem with the the instructors at Aviator PPG when you watch their video. Every single one of them shoots off to the side, loses control, takes collapses and deflations because they just simply haven't had proper instruction and they don't have all of the little pieces built into reflexes. So this is what it looks like. Here we go. Same thing. Hands up, run, jump, brakes. Didn't finish the brakes. He really should have completed the brakes, used every inch of brake. Uh, so didn't follow through, but he flew in a straight line, didn't shoot off to one side, didn't take a collapse. Now remember, at super training, we don't even let you fly until you can do 10 of these in a row without taking a single collapse. If you take a collapse on try number nine, you got to start all over from scratch. So not only do you have to be able to do it, you know, perfectly, but you need to be able to do it over and over and over and over at least 10 times in a row without ever, ever taking a collapse. So here we go. Let's show another one. Runs, jumps, breaks, lands, and bam, maintains control. Doesn't shoot off to the side. Uh, doesn't take a collapse. Like you watch the video of all four of the Aviator PPG instructors. Now this is their instructors, mind you, versus our brand new students. All of their instructors do it completely wrong and backwards. They actually bury the brakes when they jump, which is completely wrong because then they have no energy in the glider left to flare for landing because they buried the brakes when they jumped. So the gliders overshoot them. They take collapses, deflations, glider shoots off all sideways. Because if you bury the brakes when you jump, how are you going to steer with your brakes buried? So you have to watch closely to all those little details. So here we go. He runs. Jumps, breaks, lands in a straight line. You can see the hands moving, making small little controls. And again, there's another little piece back here. Let's show this again, because he also kind of got the timing wrong just a little bit. And you can see him hesitate, fix it automatically, and then go. So right there, he paused and then continued the run once he got the glider uh, flying above him. Runs, jumps, flares, lands. Very nice. There you go. Uh, you got to get all the pieces. Weight shift, fly in the correct direction. Don't take a collapse. You got to load the glider perfectly, both with your hands and with your body. If their body's standing with their legs, their legs under them, that's an issue because you need to have the weight on the glider. Notice his chest is falling against the chest strap. Uh, if you're standing up, you're not properly loading the glider and that's why you take collapses. And then of course, flying, you have to perfectly control the glider's direction every second because the glider doesn't want to perfectly stay above you. And then of course, you jump in the air and then flare for landing all without taking a collapse. So here we go. And here's another one. This guy's 240 pounds. Just watch how effortless it looks when you're actually trained correctly. Jumps, brakes, lands, boom. Beautiful, clean as can be, got the pieces. Let's just show them again. Breaks up, runs, brakes, lands. He got all the brakes, beautiful loading. And again, runs, jumps, breaks now notice how he shot off to that side you can see me saying it in the video the uh so he shot off to that one side which is a big no-no um which is all the aviator ppg instructors did the same thing um, because they don't have proper training they're not getting the instant feedback like a stu super student i mean the whole point of instruction is to have someone that knows what they're doing giving you every piece to immediately correct anything you're doing wrong and backwards so that you can practice everything right. So watch him come off the ground sideways and he shoots off a little to the right. Perfectly controls the loading, doesn't take a collapse, really nice flight, does everything pretty well, but that did need to get polished up. Now let's check out this guy in the background here at the same time. So let's watch him falls, runs, jumps, 
brakes, lands almost perfectly a straight line, doesn't take a collapse, maintains perfect loading. Beautiful! That's the way it's supposed to look. So, basically, in order to do research on who you want to train with, you got to take something specific, like a run and jump, for example, and email it around. Email, literally, this video, email it and say, hey, is Superdell full of crap? Show me. Make them show you a video of their instructors doing it because if their instructors can't even do it right. How the heck do you think they're going to train a student to do it properly? I mean, how do you think you're going to get proper instruction at Aviator PPG when all four of their instructors did it completely wrong and backwards and took collapses and shot off sideways? You're not going to learn real skills. So the number one most important thing in this sport, though when you're getting into it, is to look at the skill level of who you're talking to and take specifics and compare specifics. Because anybody can say, oh, I'm the best. And yeah, I'm the best instructor in the world. And that's great. When somebody makes a huge statement like that, that makes it especially easy to either prove it's correct or prove they're totally full of crap. Because if somebody really is the best, they should be able to show it. They should be able to show you the skills and demonstrate why they're the best and explain in exacting details with video evidence to back it up, showing exactly why and showing that, you know, they're doing what no others on earth can do. So this is how you do it. Look at a specific spread it to other instructors and demand that they compete equally by then showing themselves doing this as well as showing their students doing this before they get chucked in the sky. If you don't even have the basic ability to prevent a collapse, you obviously should not be flying. So very important information, take specifics, throw out opinion and compare equals for equals and it'll be pretty simple to find the truth.